NASA astronaut Christina Koch is about to make history for the second time this year. Tomorrow will be her 289th consecutive day in space, breaking Peggy Whitson's old record for the longest single space flight by a woman. In October, Cook took part in the first all-female spacewalk. She and fellow astronaut Jessica Meir replaced a faulty battery unit. Christina Cook joins us from the International Space Station. Good morning to you. Good morning and welcome on board. Yeah, good to be with you. Well, first and foremost, you know, tomorrow you're expected to break Peggy Whitson's record for the longest single space flight by a female astronaut. What is that like for you? What has this experience been like? Well, first and foremost, it's a huge honor. Peggy is a heroine of mine who's also been kind enough to mentor me through the years. And so it's a reminder to give back and to mentor when I get back. You know, I also like to think of it as it's not so many, so much how many days you're up here, but what you do with each of those days. So that reminds me to bring my best to every single day. I think it's wonderful for science. It helps us push the boundaries of what we know about what long duration spaceflight can do to the human body. And that's important for our future exploration, deeper into going to Mars and also returning to the moon and going there to stay. But overall, I'd have to say that my number one hope for this milestone is that the record is exceeded again as soon as possible, because that means that we're continuing to push the boundaries. Pushing boundaries is becoming the norm for you right now. Back in October, you and Jessica Meir had that first all-female spacewalk, and you both wrote so beautifully about it and in talking about it. Why do you think we're seeing these milestones now for women in space? You know, I think it's a wonderful time for human spaceflight because I think we finally recognize that it's not worth going unless we go together, that it's important to not turn away any innovative idea, that everyone has a role and everyone has a place at the table as we move forward. If we're going to go for all humanity and to support humanity's love for exploration, then we have to do it with all humanity. And I think we're seeing that as our plans unfold for going back to the moon, seeing the first woman walk on the moon in 2024, and just recognizing recognizing that we have to go together if we're going to go and we're going to do it right. You know, Christina, I love how you say you go for all of humanity, which has sort of been the mission of astronauts. But NASA says that this all-female spacewalk was not even intentionally planned, um, given its historic nature. But how do you feel about all the attention that has been given to breaking all those barriers? You know, that's exactly right. I think that the first all-female spacewalk was more a result of where we've decided to go. Um, my class was trained right in step. We were all trained together, and we we're the first class that's half female and half male, and class of astronauts. And we were never held to any different standards or expectations, and that was the beauty of it. Um, you know, to me, it's an opportunity to inspire. And I think that highlighting the fact that it was the first all-female EVA spacewalk um, is important because seeing those milestones be broken sort of tells people where we're at and where we think that the importance lies. I think that it's inspiring because future space explorers do need to see people that remind them of themselves and they see a piece of themselves in to kind of bring that inspiration home. I know that was certainly true for me and my background. So to have the opportunity to do that for future space explorers is a real honor. And Christina, obviously you're there to do science, but you've also become well known for the pictures, the photography that you've taken. What's the most memorable thing that you've seen since you've been up there? So many things come to mind. It was wonderful to see the places where I grew up from space for the first time. But I would say the most awe-inspiring thing that I've ever seen is the northern lights or southern lights or auroras, we call them, from above on a planetary scale. I've had the opportunity working in Antarctica and the Arctic to see them from below and the beautiful shimmering lights along the sky and taking over the whole sky. But to look down on the Earth and see the entire shape of the auroras, you know, as they form near the poles was truly an amazing sight and just literally took my breath away. Christina Cook, thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing just seeing you up there and, and congratulations. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure to be with you all.